if ivermectin worked against COVID, we would love it. But the studies that people are relying on are not good data. Primarily has been used to treat parasitic infections, but but there is a hypothesis that it might have some anti-inflammatory benefit and it might have some uh, some antiviral benefit as well. The way that ivermectin works in parasites is that it, it targets the uh, the neural system. It actually paralyzes the digestive system of a parasite. The traditional way that ivermectin would work wouldn't really work on a virus because yeah, it doesn't have the same makeup as a parasite. Turns out I got COVID. So we immediately threw the kitchen sink at it. All kinds of meds, monoclonal antibodies, uh, ivermectin, z uh prednisone, everything. If you were so confident with it, why take the monoclonal antibodies? Why take the prednisone? You wouldn't need to if ivermectin was a miracle cure. I've had a lot of backlash from, from Joe Rogan fans, especially recently, for saying, oh, no, he, he didn't push it. He just, you know, he, he gets experts on and they talk about the data. Well, he's had more experts on talking about ivermectin and alternative treatments to COVID than he has had from the, the legitimate scientists behind the, the vaccine, which, you know, indirectly pushes the, the agenda. when y'all want to be fools and use our damn stuff. Everybody loves a conspiracy theory. Uh, so I, I completely see where they're coming from. Now everybody can meet on a forum or a social media and say, oh, I thought that as well. I'm not getting vaccinated. <laughs> I'm not a sheep. That's selfish. Oh, but instead, <laughs> I will take a deworming drug. Isn't that meant for horses? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. There is a human form, FDA, FDA approved, and if you take the dose from the human form, then the side effects are probably going to be mild. The common side effects, yeah, diarrhea, um, headaches, uh, rash. Um, now, that, that's if you take the recommended dose. Don't take ivermectin if you plan on driving, operating heavy machinery, or if you're wearing your good pants. What we're seeing that's very concerning is people using the animal ivermectin, which comes as a paste or a, or a liquid. If you try and self-medicate with animal medication, then the, you know, you're know you putting yourself at risk of overdosing. We've seen people have seizures. We've seen people have real adverse neurological events. And, uh, and, and those will put you in hospital. Studies that have been quoted by people who support ivermectin are all what we call retrospective. So that means that they're looking back at things. And when you look back, you're more likely to have confirmation bias because you think that ivermectin works for COVID. Some of the studies that have been published online are woefully underpowered without enough participants, botched randomization and endpoints that are changed mid-study. Oxford University did a, a meta-analysis of, of 10 studies. Meta-analysis is really the pinnacle of evidence-based medicine. So that's a, an analysis of all of the good trials that are out there. Uh, their conclusion from doing um, uh, the meta-analysis of these 10 studies was that there was no benefit uh, whether you used um, ivermectin or placebo. Clinical trials for the vaccines have have been through hundreds of thousands of people. If you include all the all the trials uh, all over the world for the different vaccines, so that's evidence and that's robust evidence. Unfortunately, I think people have such a mistrust of um, you know authority, and now you know medical authorities come into that subgroup. My message on social media is: yeah, just look at where the sources are coming from and try and try and think for yourself. <laughs> 